uh, on the replay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we try to be here, Marriage Moment Tips with the Nobles. Uh, interesting dialogue, fun, laugh, conversations, and uh, concerning relationships. So we try to come on on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Yes. Marriage Moment Tip with the Nobles. Feel free to join in the conversation, invite someone, mm -hmm. invite a couple, start a watch party, <laughs> uh, do something that um, may help those and help yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, so tonight's topic is, you want to do it on us? Um, yeah, yeah, we can do it on us. Okay. So let's talk about how to deal with anger. Mm -hmm. uh, anger in relationships. How to deal with anger. Uh, what do we do when we're mad at our partner mm -hmm. or we're mad? Mm -hmm. How to have uh, healthy anger. Healthy. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing wrong with being angry. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said, be, be angry, angry, but sin not. not. So, so anger is a real emotion. Mm -hmm. But how do you be angry, be upset, be mad with your spouse mm -hmm. in a healthy way? And so everything we do, everything we do in a relationship needs to be healthy. Right. And oftentimes it's not. Right. Uh, and sometimes we have to rebound. We have to redo. We have to apologize. Mm -hmm. All the things that happens in relationships. And I think uh, just because uh, y'all are in love and just because we're married doesn't mean that we're separate individuals. And we are all growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're still growing regardless of we've been married 28 years, regardless of how long you've been together. Mm -hmm. You're still growing. You're still finding out a little bit about yourself and about your partner and about how y'all uh, are together. Right. And, and, so, and if you, um, just in case you missed last week's discussion, we talked about triggers. How do you know what triggers your spouse or do you know what triggers your spouse? And we touched on... We, a tad bit of anger yep. um, as well. So don't forget to go back and watch the replay from last week um, dealing with the triggers, knowing the triggers of your spouse. And so we're going to piggyback off of that from last week and kind of uh, dive into specific, something specific, which is anger. Yeah, because a lot of times when, when, that, when that trigger, when that gun go off, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes behind that, once that trigger is pulled and the gun go off, oftentimes there's anger involved. A lot of emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, and and what y'all know is that for the most part, we can be more patient mm -hmm. with individuals outside the relationship wow. than we can be patient with people in with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that's because emotions involved in attachments mm -hmm. and expectations. Right, right. And, a bit, and you know you also... We know that we can also leave that other person that's outside of the marriage, but you right. can't leave the one that's inside. <laughs> Technically, if you're trying to do it the right <laughs> way, <laughs> and if you're trying to do it the right way, you can't leave them. Mm -hmm. So it is permanent, opposed right. to someone outside of the right. marriage or the a relationship that is temporary. Yeah, you know somebody on your job. Right. You know you're gonna leave and right. then come back the next day. Right. You but, have time to, right. you know, get over it or deal yeah. with it. But dealing with your spouse or your partner, you have a tendency to have pent up frustration because right. it's it's a build up if you don't deal with it through effective communication. Yeah. So how do you deal with anger when you are angry with me? You know, Dolly? you know the the truth is, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when you make me upset. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you know, cause and this is this is good because mm -hmm. when we talk about expectations from somebody else versus our our mate, our spouse, or our girlfriend or boyfriend, mm -hmm. because you know me, you know more than better than mm -hmm. some other individuals. Okay, and therefore you, what I can get away with them, I can't get away with you. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, it's, it it seems like a chess match. It's like a, a mm -hmm. checkers match. And a lot of times, you know, when I get upset, uh, I, I, you know, I tend to internalize stuff um, mm -hmm. because I don't know how to respond because I don't want to lash out the wrong way. You know, I tend to run and hide and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tend to, you know, when I get angry, 
or upset, uh, I tend to, you know, distance myself from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that may, you know, I don't leave, you know, I don't get in the car and go nowhere. I just may go into my, my office, my man cave, uh, and just be alone. But is that the right way to do well, that? Well, I mean, at that moment, mm -hmm. you know, to me, you know, it is, it is, to me, it's the right way at that mm -hmm. moment. Now, is it healthy? Um, you know, that, that could be, you know, that's debatable. To me, I think it's healthy because I don't know what to say at that moment. And rather than say something that may cause more hurt, more harm, uh, and, and start a, you know, get back, you know, tit for tat, mm -hmm. you know, I tend to, you know, want to slow down and think about it. Because a lot of times, you know, because I internalize, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I want, I'm trying to figure out, is it me or is it you? Mm. You know, am I looking at it a certain way? And so at that moment, you know, that's what tends to happen. And as you can see, we are not perfect. Mm -mm. And we don't have all the answers. Mm -mm, we don't. And tonight we're being transparent, you know, as we are always right. um, transparent with you because... Um, getting angry and getting upset with your spouse is is a real is is a real thing. It's real emotional. You know, it's very emotional, and mm -hmm. it's at the top of the chart. You know, you can be um, a frustrated, you can have a pet peeve, you can be disappointed, but when you get angry, that's almost like at the top of the chart. Yeah, and it's very hard to deal with those emotions mm -hmm. if you haven't had any prior um, or pre planning before that, or you haven't planned. Uh, or prepare yourself on how to deal with your emotions. And you just, you've never dealt with, if you've never dealt with anger or how to effectively deal with anger before and how to subject that thing or how to get rid of it or dissolve it, then you're going to put yourself back in the same boat, in the same mm -hmm. boat, in the same in the boat. Cycles. And it's, it's a cycle. It's mm -hmm. an ever, you know, uh, revolving door, you know, if you don't ever deal with it. So it's best to... Um, have those, last week we talked about wellness checks. Right. And um, so I do advise you to go back and listen to last week's tape. Mm -hmm. So the wellness check, do a check in and check out with your spouse. Find mm -hmm. out, is there, you know, anything bothering you today mm -hmm. or has anything been bothering you this week or is there anything about me that I may need to change or, you know, do those wellness checks, a healthy wellness check to make sure that your spouse is not, uh, you know, doesn't get upset with you. Mm -hmm. And you need to find uh, a way to communicate what can we do to um, restore our communication, restore our healthy marriage, you know, from, you know, you being angry or, or right. myself being angry and how do we deal with it? That needs to be a topic. Okay, so how do we deal with anger the next time? And even if you've already yeah. fussed or gotten angry with each other and it has already happened, go ahead when you come, when you both come down, have that healthy conversation and say, okay, this went left. Mm -hmm. You know, be willing to admit the wrong. And then just suggest, let's go and sit down and let's do a wellness check. Um, maybe late on tonight or maybe tomorrow or, in, or the end of the week. Make sure your wellness checks come early, earlier than usual if you are um, dealing with some anger in your marriage or in your uh, relationship. And ask your, your partner, uh, what can what can we do to make this better the next time? Because guess what? It's going to be a next time. Yep. <laughs> it's always going to be a next time. So, you know, just kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's, and it's good. It's interesting that we talked about triggers. Because mm -hmm. as you were thinking, you know, I was just asking, what actually does make me angry? Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times is when the expectation is not met. Mm -hmm. uh, when... Uh, when there was a lack of communication and I was expecting something or I, I expect something out of you or mm -hmm. I assume, and that's the biggest thing, assumptions. Uh, you assume your spouse understood or you assume they know. Mm -hmm. Or it could have been, it could have been, um, you know, something that triggered it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, how do you effectively deal with anger? Uh, how do you, how do you respond positively and maintain, and that's why I like what you said, mm -hmm. and maintain the oneness. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when we get angry, you know, it, it, it temporarily disfellowships us from our spouse. I hate to use those kind of words. Mm -hmm. But how do you, how do you help be angry healthy 
in in a healthy manner how do you how do you make it where it's okay to be angry mm-hmm. but maintain the fellowship and relationship mm-hmm. well i try to take myself out of the equation what you mean by that um what i mean by that is if i see you upset or getting upset and becoming angry i remove my emotions Mm -hmm. from the situation because if i if i get upset with you then it's just two emotions battling it out and that's gonna come with sudden destruction Mm -hmm. you know so i try to make sure that i uh, remove my emotions from the equation and then i you know i kind of go back and i try to think about Okay, so did I do anything? I don't ask you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I give you space. You know, we talked mm-hmm. about, um, you know, that before. I yeah. give you space. But in the meantime, I'm evaluating myself and I'm saying, well, did I say anything to upset him? Or did I do anything to upset him? And when I come to the conclusion that the answer is no, then I know <laughs> most of the time. Then I know. That's interesting. Yeah, That's interesting. Then, I, I said, That's you know, most when then, you come wait, to the let me and then I then I know <laughs> that I need to give him space because he's up, uh, upset or angry about something that doesn't really affect me and he needed at that time to <laughs> maybe take some take it out on on others, on me. <laughs> wait others. a minute, wait a minute. That's so, how I see. So you what you're saying is after your evaluation and conclusion, mm-hmm. you figure it ain't nothing you did. If if that's a conclusion that I come come to, right? Not all the time. All right. But then, sometimes my evaluation uh, and my self reflection is saying, okay, so I must have did that, and that upset him. I can come to that conclusion as well. And so, when you figure it out, when you say it's not you, sometimes, being, sometimes mm-hmm. in those times you say it's not you. Mm-hmm. And what you're saying is there's something going on with me that... I'm saying something could have, a, something must okay. have affected you outside. or triggered you outside and you brought it inside. So I just need to, and then we, I got the re, re, repercussion of that. So oh, then, so I'm taking my frustration and anger out on you uh-huh, if because I, of something else. Okay. Yes, and so if I determine that it's to be so, then what I do is I give you space. And I give you, you time. Give space. I okay. give you space and time because then I know that it doesn't have anything to do with me, you know. So I give you your space and your time. Mm-hmm. So the way I deal with your anger, if you're angry, then I give you space and time. If it doesn't have anything to do with me, now if it does, okay, if, it, if, if it's something that, that right, yeah. if it's something that I cause or mm-hmm. I trigger, then I still give you space and time. But then I come. And I check on you a little bit more often, or then, or either I uh, later when I think that you've calmed down, then I will apologize to you, and I just say, you know, I'm sorry uh, uh, if I upset you, or I'm sorry for, you know, blah blah blah, right. you know, and then I apologize because you don't need to be too big that you can't um, apologize to your spouse mm-hmm. if you know that you were in the wrong. Yeah, you know, and I think. You know, my response to to being angry is because I don't want to, you know, I have a way with words. Yes. And I don't want to use my words as a knife or or a bullet or I don't want to I don't want to react and I don't mm-hmm. want to lash out. Mm-hmm. Um and so that space and time and oftentimes, you know, um that does it. Mm-hmm. Uh but there are some cases where you know what if what if I re, what if you remain there and and you have a spouse that that don't walk away, uh, then I think it's, it's important to still do a, a quick evaluation. Now you have to be you have to be in control of your emotions mm-hmm. because everybody thinking we both grown. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in the case of tension is high, mm-hmm. voices are loud. You know, someone have to be the cooler party uh, as much as possible. Uh, you can never go wrong taking the high road. Yes. Uh, and I was just thinking. I was just thinking of a scripture. The Bible said, "Anger rested in the bosom of fools." Mm-hmm. And so now you got two fools mm-hmm. uh, being foolish. And when two fools are in this, 
And it can't never come out of mm-hmm. two fools. Mm-hmm. And so I choose to I choose to walk away because I don't want to be foolish. Right. Uh, so what happens when uh, you get angry at me? Listen, uh-huh. now we talked about me getting angry. At you. <laughs> so what happened? What is your response when you get angry? All right. Well, so how do you choose to deal with anger? Well, now that's a little different. Because <laughs> you don't get angry that often. No, I, okay. well, I I don't think I do. But mm-hmm. when I do get angry with you, mm-hmm. the shoe is on the other foot and yeah, it's yeah. not taken so well. What you mean? So by I that? know how to deal with you when you get angry. But I but when know. I get angry, I I get really agitated. My anger turns into uh, agitation and frustration, you know, okay. so I get frustrated that you're not, um, most of the time it's because you're not hearing me, you know, right. if it's, if it's some, if I get angry at you, it, it's probably because I don't feel heard. Don't heard, yeah, I don't feel heard, that really frustrates me if, if, um, or if my words are being twisted around and you just don't get what I'm saying, so. What I do, I do get quiet. So I, get, I too get quiet. I kind of go to myself and I, I give you the, 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 the quietness. Not really the cold shoulder. And, and the way I say that is because... You on a slippery slope, man. <laughs> you on a slippery slope. Listen, you be, watch I don't it, watch really it, get you. <laughs> okay, so what I mean by cold shoulder is, cold shoulder to me is, if you say something to me and then I'm just ignoring you. Okay. I don't ignore you. If you try to talk to me and I'm, I'm still angry or frustrated with you, I still will res- respond. I'm going to respond. I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not mm-hmm. going to give you the cold shoulder. But I'm still frustrated with you, so I'm going to be silent until my anger calms down, until I calm, you know, I can get myself to calm down. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to give you a cold shoulder. To me, that that's rude, and that's disrespectful, mm-hmm. and that's um that's when you are ignoring your spouse, even when they're trying to talk to you. You mm-hmm. know, if they're trying to talk to you, then I will. I don't I don't try to respond in a nasty tone or ugly tone. I just you know I say something, but I think the tone that I do project, you probably know that it's a little short. My, right, answers, you get short. my answers are going to be short. You get short. My answers are going to be very short. You get short. I'm going to... What is it? Close in? No, 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 no. You get short. And the close in. You get short. <laughs> well, okay. And it's it cold. Is, is, you know, it's, it's cold. It's cold. It is cold. You know, because it's cold, because normally you're warm. Yes, I am. And, you know, you talk and you want to dialogue. Yes. But when you get short, you know... Then you, you should know that, it's, that I'm frustrated. Yeah, there's something going on. And I actually would prefer Watch the coffee. because I like to talk. Huh? Watch the coffee. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you mean? The, the, the criminal justice. Oh. Okay, so I actually would like to, um, I would like for you to actually engage in a conversation when, I, when I'm frustrated, angry. Um, you know, disappointed, whatever the feelings are, mm-hmm. I get silent only because you want me to pursue and yeah. find out. Well, I get silent because I'm angry and frustrated, mm-hmm. but I don't mind you pursuing, right? And, and trying to come when I give you the short, you know, cold answers. I want you to, you know, engage and act like you notice that I'm upset, okay? But unlike me. When mm-hmm. you get upset, you want me to leave you alone. Mm-hmm. You just need some space and time. Mm-hmm. I don't. I will leave you alone. I mean, I I'll be you know blunt and I right. just be you know cold shoulders and you know, but it's not because um it's not because that's what I want. It's only right. because you're not engaged at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's so it's very important to know. Uh, you're not the, the the language of your spouse, mm-hmm. and that's what I hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very important to know the language of your partner, uh, what's normal and what's abnormal. Mm, right. Uh, what's right. normal, and even uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because with me, 
or I tend to want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. if, it, if I'm not careful, then I will use that same method when you get angry, mm -hmm. but not so. Uh, I got to know that when you get angry, that although you short and cold, <laughs> although you short and cold, <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> then you know, then I need to, I need to not, I need, I need to not distance. I need to what stay there in the midst of it. Stay in the midst. But it still, it still requires a cool hand. One of the things you brought up is pride. Pride would tell me, no, nope, she's angry with me. She give me the cold shoulder, then I'm then, then I don't care. See, mm -hmm. that's pride. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that we have to be careful that when we are angry, or when our partner, or our spouse is angry, that we don't allow pride mm -hmm. uh, to 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 uh, to get be forth, be on the forefront of us. Mm -hmm. Don't allow pride uh, because remember, this is the person uh, that in other times pride of them not getting angry. They was lovey dovey. You like them. You love them. You want to be near them. Where if there's a case where there's a disagreement, there's anger, they are that still person. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's an emotion now. There's a different emotion, and especially when uh, ninety percent of the time there's not anger involved. We're talking about ten percent of the time when there's actually anger. We're talking about. We're not talking about disagreement. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about times where. You know, you are you are frustrated. Mm -hmm. I'm frustrated. There's something happened. A trigger has been pulled, and and we got to settle this. There's tension. You know, there's this tension between us uh, because we all are growing, uh, and as the relationship grows, we still growing as individuals. Mm -hmm. So this air ever changing, and so but anger is much deeper than disagreement. Right. Anger is I'm offended. There's been a spot that you have touched mm -hmm. that I don't disagree with, that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that we don't allow pride. Right. Pride. So, so how long should you remain angry with your spouse? Because there, there can be, a, like you said, a healthy angry, a healthy anger, and mm -hmm. then there could be a destructive anger. And it's a buildup. And it grows and it festers mm -hmm. like a sword, like an open wound. Mm -hmm. You know, it can definitely fester like an open wound. So, how long is too long? Oh wow! What do you, think? you know, I I hate to divert the scripture, <laughs> but I'm gonna have oh, to. Okay. The scripture says, "Do not let the sun go down oh. on your wrath." And so, basically, you know, don't allow it overnight. Okay. Uh, but it happens. Because uh, that means you're sleeping in the other room. Or you got, or you going to bed, you know, with yeah. some false emotions. Yeah. Uh, and and that that's good. That's that's good. So so now I understand a whole other connotation when the scripture says that marriage bed is honorable in all and is undefiled. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes we defile the marriage bed, not because of the because of crazy stuff in terms of sex wise, uh, but anger. That also because the because that union that bed especially two people that's married mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 the, the bedroom and the bed is a place of peace and repose mm -hmm. should be a place where vulnerability we can be transparent mm -hmm. that's what the scripture says and I understand that because y'all uh, it's something about time mm -hmm. uh, if you go to bed with that if you go to bed with that uh, then there's a new day. Mm -hmm. uh, you allow something now, something in the past is preventing y'all from going forward in the future. Mm -hmm. So then, even even having this discussion, I understand that we shouldn't allow anger. We ought to settle that before we go to bed. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, there's been some stories of individuals not waking up. Mm -hmm. You know, and they went to be angry, and you you know, and now they can't take it back. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I understand, I really understand that if we take it into the next day, mm -hmm. then now we're in the past and we're stuck there until we get it right. That's right. So I say, don't go to bed angry. What mm -hmm. you say? I agree with that. I agree with the, whatever the work Bible it out. says. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. <laughs> so work it out. Go down on your it work it out. That. 
Work yeah. it out. So I don't care if he, if he, you know, do do you ever get to, do we ever get, have we ever got to the point where we say, okay, you know what? I'm going to hold, I don't agree. You don't agree. But we understand, we agree to disagree, yeah. but not be angry. Is, I, is, yeah. that, is that appropriate? I think so. I mean, I think, if, especially if you're in the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. and it's bedtime, then I think that you should say a quick little, do a quick little wellness check and just yeah. say, listen, listen, babe, I know we're both angry. We're both upset with mm -hmm. each other right now. Um, can we table this? Can we agree to disagree for tonight? And so we can, you know, go on to bed and maybe discuss it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Discuss it the next day, you know, when we both have gotten some rest and calm down. And I think if both spouses agree, then you're not going to bed. You're not letting right. the sun go down on your wrath. You know, you're not going right. to be angry because you you temporarily reconcile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. until until um, you can kind of complete. You know, what's well, you actually did reconcile, and then you're going to complete the task of effective communication the next day. Yeah. So yeah. you know. So so you know, there's another script that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, God is you know. Uh, the Bible says, dwell with your husbands, dwell with your wives, according to how you know them, mm -hmm. that your prayers be not hindered. Okay. And so I was just thinking that oftentimes before I go to bed, you know, at night or you go to bed or after you go to bed, mm -hmm. you know, I go into prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to pray late because mm -hmm. the house is quiet. Sometimes we wake the house up. Uh, uh, so, uh, so even with that, mm -hmm. you know, even sometimes we get... We think that, okay, I'm going to pray, and that's going to solve it. But that's, my prayers are hindered right. if we don't resolve that. Right. And I know my I know she's going to be still angry, but I'm going to go pray now. Mm -hmm. Before, if I know she's going to go to bed, I have to make that sacrifice and say, hey, listen, although I got a specific prayer time, are we angry? Then it is, it is incumbent upon me right then to settle that even before I go into prayer. Because the scripture said your prayers will be hindered. Yeah. Now, I now I will say this. Okay. And the scripture does say that. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's nothing wrong with you going and trying to, you know, ask God to give you the right words to say. Yes, to, okay. To help you, um, you know, or praying that, you know, he helps you with the uh, conversation, the communication, and in the marriage, and just praying to ask him for guidance. Mm -hmm. Because you can, if you come straight to me, and you you upset, and I'm upset, and it may still go left. Right. Uh, if you're trying to talk it out, you know, when people go to other people trying to talk it out, um, when they're angry, sometimes they continue to argue. And that's why they always say, don't try to talk when you're angry. Mm -hmm. So make sure you still get each other's space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's okay to ask God for guidance, you know. Um, that's just the same as when you're getting ready to go in for an interview or you're getting ready to go and, you know, speak with someone about something or, or you know, you're getting ready to do something or go before a crowd, you ask God for guidance. You know, and I know that being angry is, that's a little different. Mm -hmm. Because you know, but you <laughs> was a lot different. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that you are coming with the right temperament. You know that you're coming with the right tone and the right uh, emotion. You know. So you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking about in terms of uh, individual prayer. Right. I'm not talking about going to God uh, to find out you know how to resolve this. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you know beseeching. Intercessor, in, intercessory prayer, uh, like forgetting all yeah, about your yeah, spouse. Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay. I'm talking well, about. Let's do that yeah, in because yeah. I, I want people to know. You know, that e you can. Yeah, even so, why not pray together and say, "Hey, well, we you upset know, right now." Well, you know. Well, remember we said that that when <laughs> pray together. <laughs> that was a, if you can. <laughs> that what we said that in one of our lessons about how when one spouse is upset, what do they want you to do? And we said the first thing that they're not trying to hear you quote scriptures to them and they're not trying to hear you pray 
say let's pray. You remember? Yeah, but you I'm, did that I'm, other I'm, day? I'm, and, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. However, if I'm going, if, if we're angry and I'm going to go to God and ask him, okay, how to deal with this situation, mm -hmm. then that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother aspect because now uh, I'm asking, I'm going to God alone, separate from you, but that's yeah. a good time for both of y'all to understand that, for both of us to understand that we angry, there's a reason why we angry, uh, I shouldn't that takes lowering my pride because we talked about pride mm -hmm. and saying, you know what? Hey, babe, let's pray about this. You know, pride would keep that person uh, saying, no, let's not pray about it, especially if you're Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, I'm talking about uh, just a whole nother level of, you know, a, another level of prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's there's nothing wrong because there are some, in, there's some instances where, uh, Prayer may be the only thing that fuses it, that 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 helps it, mm -hmm. that that calms it, because uh, somebody has to be speak, thinking spiritual, right? Um, and oftentimes, as Christians, you know, we shouldn't make that a last resort, but it ought to be our first resort, because now you understand that hey, we need another outside of voice mm -hmm. other than. Uh, because there's, cause there's something going on. Right. Which brings me to my next question. When do you get somebody else involved? And if you do, when when we're angry with each other and can't resolve it. When you're angry with each other and can't resolve it. <laughs> when, yeah. When, you, That's when, the, if, when you're if, angry if with we, each other and you can't if, resolve it. If, if and when we do. So when, when, when would that be? When you're angry. When you're angry with someone, with your spouse, your so partner. So before the night is over, we'll get somebody else involved and we can't resolve it. No. So I mean, what at what think? point? Yeah, at what point? You need to at least try, I think, several times. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't even have to be within the first week or the, even, I mean, if it's going on a month, then I think it's a yeah. personal, I think it's an, a matter of opinion. Because, you know, one month could be detrimental. And now, when you find yourself wanting to talk to other people outside of your marriage, then that's the time to go ahead and seek professional yep. help. Because then... The moment you talk to somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you are opening up doors for the adversary to, you know, kind of maneuver his way in and, yeah. you know, put... You're placing people in your business and things like that. So, so that's interesting. The moment, the moment that you feel the urge to go to someone to talk about the unresolved issue mm -hmm. is the moment you either seek pastoral help mm -hmm. or professional counseling or marriage counseling or relationship counseling. Mm -hmm. The moment you feel that urge uh, that, hey, there's something going that I want to talk to somebody else concerning my anger with my spouse is the moment you are to see professional counseling or pastoral counseling, those of us that know how to do it. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So hey folks, listen. What we've been talking about, those that are watching this or share watch this on the replay, we've been talking about how to deal with anger mm -hmm. uh, in a marriage and a relationship. Mm -hmm. And how to deal with it in a healthy way. And one of the good points that I'm gonna leave with and I think you're one of the last points. A lot of good points. Uh, yeah. But two points I'm going to leave with is number one, when you're angry, mm -hmm. you know, don't try to resolve that anger like uh, if, if, the, if, if you're angry, mm -hmm. I don't need to try to resolve it like when I'm angry mm -hmm. because there's a, there's a different thing that's needed from me in mm -hmm. you. Right. I require distance. I want some distance. Mm -hmm. You know, you require... You know, you don't, you don't, we need to talk it out. Mm -hmm. This is what we Right, I don't require this. Right, right. You know. So don't, so knowing your spouse, knowing your mate in terms of their nonverbals, knowing, mm -hmm. knowing when they're angry, because a lot of times people give you silent treatment. They just, or, or they do, they're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'm going to walk away with is uh, don't allow pride to, don't allow pride. Mm -hmm. I don't care how angry, because 
When pride creeps in, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. And then the last the last thing that I'm gonna walk away with is the last thing we brought up. And what was that? <laughs> you remember? <laughs> Y'all, it's crazy. <laughs> the last thing the last thing we talked about when it comes down to anger is this. The the moment I feel the need oh, okay. mm -hmm. to to talk to somebody else about why I'm angry with my mate or my spouse. That's the moment I need to see relationship counseling, both of us, mm -hmm. or pastoral counseling. Yeah. The moment. I don't care if your sister, I don't I don't care if it's family. When I'm upset and I that first instance I I feel the need mm -hmm. to talk to somebody else, that's when I need to seek help. Yeah. And also try to resolve it before the sun goes down. Yes. I agree. I agree. What you gonna walk away with? I, I'm gonna walk away with the same thing you're gonna walk away with. And I would just throw in there, mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't hurt to give them a little time and a little space. When you know that you have upset your partner, don't go immediately. I mean, it's okay to apologize, but you, you know, apologize immediately if you um, choose to do that. But don't go immediately trying to rectify if it means that you're still trying to place the blame. Because, you know, they don't want to hit it at that time. And that's not going to do anything but hinder and hurt your relationship. So give them a little time and a little space. Give yourself a little time and a little space. And then um, kind of regroup. And then kind of go back together and try to um, talk it out before the sun goes down on your wrap. So I'm going to take the same thing. Yeah, listen, we're going we're gonna to expand this, I think, next uh, next, because uh, because is there ever a time where you are withhold mm -hmm. uh, sex from your your mate uh, when you're angry? We're also going to talk about at what point uh, you know when medication is needed. Uh, this <laughs> <laughs> what kind of medication? <laughs> That's hey, a whole whole topic. I know it. We're going to talk about it because because some individuals some sometimes it ain't you. Sometimes there's an imbalance going on with inside of me, oh, okay. you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm swinging, you know, you know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm sad. At what point, what are some things we need to look for to say, hey, hey, baby, uh, do you think you want to speak to a psych? Uh, oh, no, you're supposed <laughs> to talk about yourself. Do you think you need to take the medicine? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> You got, I know your story. <laughs> I'm alright. <laughs> I'm gonna be alright. But all right. I mean, but but really, cause sometimes they're not gonna go over Wait a minute, wait a minute, Kat. Wait a minute. You don't say. You don't say. Do you think you need to take some medicine? I mean, that is not gonna go. Well, okay. Well, what I'm all. saying is, there's some cases. You need to take. I, baby, I think I need to take some medicine. There's I can't some cases. My anger. All right, this okay. We're gonna talk about that next so, week, y'all. So menopause. When, 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 well, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it now because it's time to go. So we there's some, but there's some times where a high level of provider need to be. Okay, next week. we're gonna talk about that next week because he's trying to open up the can of worms. He better diagnose himself. <laughs> All right, y'all. So you already know what the topic is gonna be. We're gonna continue this topic next week. Okay. Mm. All right, y'all. All right, we got to go. Bye. <laughs> hey, y'all, share this. Thanks for joining. Those of you who see this after the, the live or the replay, listen, comment, you know, ask questions. But we'll see y'all. We love y'all. Hey, enjoy your mate. The remainder, listen, don't go to being angry. Enjoy your mate. We love y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs> <clears throat>